a bit of controversy in Kenya at the moment, Yvonne. Apparently, the Treasury and the Minister did not submit the estimates on time, and so it's created a bit of a constitutional dispute as to whether the budget can be read uh, next week. Tell us what that's all about. <clears throat> Correct. Uh, according to the new constitution, the legislature, the judiciary and the executive should have submitted the budget at the end of April to give the budget committee within, uh, to give the budget committee a couple of months to deliberate before passing through to the National Assembly for them to pass. So the issue right now is that they haven't followed the new constitution as they should have. Uh, the minister's coming out next week of the budget. And yes, it is a constitutional problem at this point in time. All right. Now he's proposing a budget valued at about 1.15 trillion Kenyan shillings. How does he justify that spend? All right. Uh, what took us uh, by surprise, or maybe it shouldn't be such a surprise, is that it was uh, slightly higher, about 15 percent higher than that proposed in the budget statement that they read in March. Um, however, given the spending pressures in the pipeline, including spending on the constitutional reforms that are coming through, the fact that they still have infrastructure projects that they need to complete, uh, the number is not entirely a surprise. If you look at the infrastructure budget, for instance, there's a 20 percent increase mm. in that. So um, regardless of their um, plan that they put forward last year to unwind this fiscal stimulus program, we're likely to see that de being delayed. All right. On the physical infrastructure side, we're seeing a value of about 221 billion shillings planned for a variety of infrastructure projects. Nobody's going to dispute that Kenya needs to start putting money into this area. The question is, does the, does the government spend the money in each fiscal year? Do they have the capacity? Well, like most African governments know, uh, they don't spend the entire budget. However, the needs are there, as you've rightly put. But we have seen some momentum. If you visit Nairobi or uh, wider Kenya, you will see that there's been some uh, increase in activity in terms of uh, construction of roads in particular, uh, particular. They're also building more geothermal plants to diversify power generation away from uh, mm -hmm. hydropower, which, as you know, is vulnerable to rainfall. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are seeing progress in that front. All right. Also on the area of uh, infrastructure, we've seen uh, just over a billion shillings being allocated for commuter rail refurbishment. Kenya's had a very controversial and slow privatization of its railways. What's happening there? Because possibly mm. if they could speed that up, we wouldn't need to be allocating all this money. True. Um, proceeds from privatization are not the only ones that have been delayed due to the slow processes within government. We've had them delay, of course, the infrastructure bond that they've priced into next year's budget. But yes, we have seen a slowdown in terms of momentum on the privatization side. Part of it may be due to the fact that they've got this new constitution and all these uh, this other uh, reforms around, mm. around the constitution that they need to put in place before next year's election. So some of these plans, including privatization, may have been delayed as a result of that. Lots of money has been allocated towards public administration. And as you said initially, uh, there are huge costs incurred in the constitutional reform process, an increase of 35 billion shillings. How big is the civil service now in Kenya? How big is the administration to justify okay. this? The civil service is still as big as it was prior to the constitutional referendum last August. The good news, though, is that from 2013, we're going to see a much more leaner government. The number of ministries are going to drop from around 42 to 22. And yes, the next question you may ask is, so what's going to happen to all those civil servants <laughs> working in the other ministries? Well, they do have plans to move them to the counties. As you know, they've now devolved parts of the counties. Yeah. Of course, they want to absor absorb all those civil servants. But uh, the good news is that we're going to see fewer yeah. ministries. Obviously, these days, every Everybody's talking about de uh, developing an African private sector. And so there are calls for, for budgets to really allocate resources for SME development, uh, incentivize investment, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Do you see that in this budget? Um, that's likely to come through, yes. Uh, we've seen quite s some significant changes in the budget particularly following the last elections. And you can see there's greater emphasis in terms of empowering the youth, uh, giving them uh, funds in which to start businesses, so SME development will be under uh, uh, them. We've seen through some of the banks, such as Equity Bank, which uh, more so than other banks lends to SMEs. So you have seen greater strides in that front in terms of empowering the people at the low end mm. so that the issues of inequality that we saw uh, erupt at the last elections reduce. 
Yvonne, you mentioned uh, the stimulus plan and the IMF has called for that to be wound up and the government uh, should start yeah. looking at more innovative ways <coughs> of making money and spending money. Do you see that happening this year? Um, sorry, Lars, to just repeat the question once more. I'm saying, do you see the government being serious about uh, winding down its stimulus programs? Okay. We think there'll be a challenge, I think I answered that in the first question, that there'll be a delay in terms of unwinding that due to the spending uh, plans they have for the constitutional reforms. We've got elections coming up next year. Added to that, you've got slowing economic growth, which implies revenue collections are also likely to slow. So we're not likely to see them achieve the deficits in around the 3% of mm -hmm. GDP level that they're looking for as soon as over the next three years due to these um, uh, pipeline spending plans.